teach science, and our big concern is because we're having to hire so many lecturers, we are really exploiting our lecturers because our labs are worth one credit. The lecturers get paid one credit for three hours of work, plus the grading and preparation. That is really exploitation. It makes it very difficult to hire good lecturers because we pay so little for teaching a lab. Uh, can I ask a question? Do you, do you have your, um, a separation between the lecture and the lab course? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have that. The lab course is separate, mm -hmm. um, but many of our classes require that you take both the both lab right. and the lecture. So we're asking a lecturer to come in, teach the lecture portion for three credits, teach three hours of contact for one credit of pay. Does anyone have any comments or ideas about what we could possibly be doing to try to take care of that? Yeah, it's, there's a parallel to this. I, I teach ballet and um, at, at Manoa, they, it just struck me that they pay the PNS, um, the accompanists, one credit hour. But the accompanist just comes in and accompanies the class. There's no grading. There's no supervision of students at all. So there's a real disconnect there. Yeah. Thank you. Just one thing I'd add. This was the first thing I think that was brought up at Maui College as well. And it really is a big issue, the exploitation of lectures. And it's something that really needs to be addressed. And on Maui College, for example, I think four departments have no tenured or tenure track faculty. They're all lecturers mm -hmm. in, what was it, sociology? Sociology, sociology. economics, poli sci, and geography. Geography. Yeah. And business right now only has one, has one, and it's one of the largest, it has the most students in it, and we've got one full time faculty at the moment. So. And, and this is a really disturbing trend because those faculty, well, besides being exploited, <clears throat> they have no power in the university. They have no ability to really participate in faculty governance, which is in, uh, uh, essential to the university. And so it, I think it's one of the key issues that we really have to fight for in every way we can. Uh, you know, Even if we have tenure, uh, as David pointed out, it's going to impact all of us at some point. And just to speak, I was a lecturer for 22 years. Um, At KCC, so I'm wondering, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about how we can interject our voice into getting some positive changes done. Um, I got my position at KCC because of pressure from accrediting agencies that we were overloaded with lecturers. And so John Morton at the time, the provost, converted a lot of us to this strange position that no longer exists on paper either, a V position. Um, and I'm wondering if we can bring this up. I mean, are, are you guys, we're going through something at KCC. I know HCC is. Are you still going through the accreditation process? Do you still have contact? I mean, is, is there something that we can do to really bring that into the forefront of their attention? We've got a couple here, a couple yeah. people here wanted to speak. So Ross and then Rick. In the context of lectures, uh, of what Duffy said earlier, uh, we have, like in our division, four full-time people. Two, two, we had what we thought was lecturer money, and we converted it to two half-time. So that was a, you know, an, an interesting um, compromise. And I was wondering, we still have all of this money. Can we turn them into instructor positions so that uh, lecturers get something out of it, campus gets something out of it? Because uh, for the last three years, we have, we've had positions, and we thought we were going to get Higher, higher tenure track, but never came through. So we're, we're like uh, five to one in terms of faculty versus one, one position. I think we have like 20 lecturers now in our division. And they're pretty much carrying much of the load. Some of them have three classes. So I was, is, is that something UPA would support? I think UPA supports, absolutely. Because we did that creatively years ago. That's how we got some sort of full-time people who come to meetings and got two half-time positions. Uh, at one point, we were trying to take those two half-time and make them one full-time. They said we might be able to do that. So if those kind of things are you know, available and supported by the union, I'm not sure whether that's okay, then I think it's 
uh, you might help to, to at least temporarily solve this problem, not getting any full-time people on tenure track. 